Hey, it's Cybergem. Let's play with Ultra Term. I feel like showing you guys this a bit today. So let's start by just having a look at Ultra Term demo. So actually, some people have asked me what what is the point of making an, a terminal emulator with Unreal Engine in the first place? Because it's kind of, it's kind of uh, resource intensive. What's the point of that? Well, actually, Ultra Term began as a fake terminal emulator for a game I was developing a couple years ago. And then I just decided to keep developing it. And I realized, I started doing things like, I wrote a custom font atlas and started offloading work to the GPU because I just wanted it to be faster. And at some point I realized I could turn it into a real terminal emulator by running child processes and parsing the ANSI escape sequences from standard out. So I did that and now it's actually a terminal emulator. But the real um, Ultra Term really is a, it's a, it's an exploration of the terminal as an art medium. So the, the perp, it's actually a plugin for Unreal Engine designed for game developers and other kinds of application developers who want to integrate text-based user interfaces or even a real terminal, terminal emulator into their project. So it, it isn't just a terminal emulator in that it can run uh, console programs. It actually comes with a really large development framework for building uh, applets and user interfaces um, for use in things like games or little applications and stuff like that. So the screens can actually be embedded in, uh, three, in 3D objects in the world. They don't just have to be applied uh, to the screen. They don't have to just be applied to the viewport two-dimensionally. They can also be used to simulate a little, a little computer terminal in the world. That explains a bit why it's been built in Unreal Legend. It started as a, uh, it started as a component of a game, and um, so I'll just show you around a bit. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at Ultra Term Demo. So Ultra Term Demo is what you can download from my website. It's the compiled package version of Ultra Term that you can test. You can even use it as a real terminal emulator if you want, and it has it has a ton of. Um, little demo applets you can run to to try out Ultra Term and see what it can do. So check this out. So this is the this here is the about about applet. So if you go here, this is the default shell. It's Ultra Term has its own shell called Ultra Shell and it's not as full featured as something like Bash or even Command. <laughs> it's but it's it runs within Ultra Term. You can you can um you can run, you can launch Ultra Term's native applets from within it, which you can, you can see a list of them if you type list of apps. And so the, the about app is an applet that runs in Ultra Term. And there's a few things going on here you can, uh, I can explain to you. So the development framework for Ultra Term has a, a layer system. You can, if you ever use something like Photoshop or GIMP or Krita, it's quite similar to that in, in the way that you can layer objects on the screen. So each layer has, uh, it's a layer of cell. So each cell can contain a glyph and it can have a foreground color and a background color. And there's some more data you can associate with the glyphs, but that's, the, the, that's basically all it really is though. It's just the two colors and the glyph. And so it, there's, um, you can layer, you can, there's, you can have an infinite number of nested layers of glyphs, of the term cells. And so in this, in the About app, you can see a demonstration of this. So in the background, there's actually another applet. So the so applets themselves are just screen objects. So they can just be layered. You can layer app, applets together <laughs> inside of each other. So the, the, so the rain applet is its own little applet so I just launched that one from ultra shell you can change the speed of the rain with the up and down arrow keys so the rain applet is in the background of the about applet and then on top of it is layered a, uh, a box screen object and then inside that box there are a few different kinds there's mostly just text elements later inside of it 
Although the the ultra term title, that's a, a different kind of screen object called a block drawing screen object. I'll show you that later. This, these the color animations and all that, the color and print animations that you see here, these are, um, those are applied with a, a special system that ultra term has called the filter system, and I'll explain filters a little more later. But it allows you to animate the colors and the glyphs of screen objects at runtime by attaching and removing them. It's, it's quite handy. So anyways, the box in the about screen, the about applet, you can see that the box is layered on top of the rain applet. And so the, its glyphs draw above it. And you'll notice something else too though. The box has a translucent background and the, the colors of the glyphs behind it blend with the background. So the, the box has um, a black background with like an opacity of 60% or something like that. So you can see that the, the glyphs behind it uh, are a little bit dimmer. So that's another one of the features of Ultra Term is that you can, um, the, there's layer blend, there's alpha layer blending between all the layers. So if there's a, if there's a term cell in a layer that doesn't have a glyph, but it has a background color that's not fully opaque, it will blend with the background color and glyph colors of the term cells below it. So that's kind of nice, right? So let's look at some other applets. Actually, I'll tell you about the filter system right now, I guess. The easiest way to show this is so in ultra shell you can um you can add a f you can add a filter by appending the filter's name to the end of the launch command so there's a filter called color shift actually can you list filters oh you can okay so there's here's all the current filters but some of them aren't really usable in the demo because they have to be set up in Unreal Engine when you compose your applet in Blueprint or C++, but some of them work fine. So like, if you append uh, the name of a filter to the end of an applet, it will apply that filter to the applet when it launches. So in this case, I added the color shift filter to the Rain app, and you can see that what the color shift does is it, it shifts the colors of the glyphs that are filtered by it over time. Uh, cycles around and around so that's that's a very simple example of a filter and how you can apply it so filters can be applied to any screen objects and screen objects can control it what filters they're affected by because they're by default they're inherited so check this out so the color shift filter gets applied to the about applet here but all of the other screen objects in the about applet, like the box and the text and everything, those are child screen objects of the about applet itself. So they inherit the filters of the about applet. So the color shift filter has, is being applied to every single screen object on the screen right now. It looks pretty radical. By the way, if you press control alt D, you can open the Ultra Term debug window, and you can enlarge it by dragging the corner like so. And then there's some stats. We'll talk about that later, maybe. But if you go to effects, you can change, uh, you can enable and disable and customize some of the screen effects. I don't think I'm capturing my mouse cursor, so that might be a little weird. One sec. I'm capturing the mouse cursor now. So if you look, so there are quite a few different ones applied here right now. Um, so if I turn glow on and off, that one's really obvious. This one, this one adds a, bl a bloom effect to the screen. And this, this is applied uh, at, a sh at the shader level. So it's not dependent on rendering the screen in the 3D world for people who are familiar with how bloom works uh, in Unreal Engine. This is separate from, this is separate from uh, that bloom system. So you can actually use this bloom effect even inside uh, just pure user interface land like in UMG if you because you can run ultra term as a UMG widget so you can uh, these effects are independent of being rendered within the game world so the, for example here's bloom you can you know mess with the sliders make it real blurry and stuff if you want 
Oh, there's static. <laughs> you can go crazy with it if you want. Well, you can customize the color too, but you can't do that in the demo. You have to do that in the engine. I mean, this is kind of cool, right? Uh, after image. We'll play with that one a little more later, but that's... Uh, yeah, the jitter. This one's cool. I usually don't leave... The, I don't have this one on by default in the demo just because it's, it's too distracting. But you can create some really cool... You can make some really cool sort of damage CRT monitor-like effects if you throw that one on. So you can, you know, if you spend some time adjusting these settings, you can come up with pretty cool CRT effects. Like if, um, if you bump scan line up, the gap and the thickness to two, I think it looks the best. Kind of just play with the opacity to get a different sort of look. Reduce the the speed. So the per adjusting the period of the jitter changes it a lot. <laughs> so this looks pretty wacky. This is cool though. Uh, there's roll. You can actually cause the screen to um, start uh, rolling wildly, and make you sick. But you know how sometimes on the old um, CRT monitors, the the picture would start rolling. Well, you can actually control this roll effect in Unreal Engine with um, with a graph. I forgot what it's called at the moment. There's a there you can uh, a curve that you can you can specify a custom curve and basically draw a graph to control. So, like, say you just wanted the monitor to roll quickly for like half a second every ten seconds or something like that. You could set that up. Also, flicker. Sometimes, you know, old screens would flicker a little. This would make you sick though, so I just have it turned off by default. It's just for some of the stuff, like a lot of the stuff is just cosmetic for creating cool terminal and screens in video games, like a busted up CRT monitor in a, uh, in a derelict spaceship or something like that, right? So yeah, I'm gonna turn off some of these now. So the, if you go back, if we go back to the shell, and you can change the font size by holding Control Alt Shift and pressing the up and down arrow keys. So, Ultra Term also has a theme system. You can go list themes. There are quite a, it comes with quite a few by default. And to switch to a theme, you just type theme and then the theme name. So let's switch to the neck theme. Oh, that's the same font as we're using, I think. Um, modern, so this is just like, you know, something you'd see in a regular terminal. You can also change the background and foreground colors with the set FG and, and set set BG commands. I think I'll uh, so no, it's RGB so uh, R G B actually we'll put this like 0 0.3 change this a little bit. That's oh, kind of nice I guess. Whatever. There are a bunch of cool bunch of cool fonts in here. This guy named Viler, he makes these insane retro fonts. I shipped it with a few. Um, there's a nice DOS font in here too, if you're into that. If you type show font, it'll show you all the glyphs that the font contains. Yeah, some of these, these some of these fonts don't have a ton, but check this out. If I go to the, I switch to the modern font. This is some Google font for terminals. It's a monospace font. This one has a lot of glyphs. Oh yeah, you can also use the mouse wheel to scroll the screen. There's full mouse support. You can, you can get mouse click events for every term cell and uh, mouse over events and things like that. So you can uh, you can actually create a, a user interface with this that can be navigated with the mouse if you want. But this font, uh, another thing about fonts in UltraTerm is that you can specify multiple fonts in a theme simultaneously. So for example, if I display all the fonts that this one has, this one has some... Um, has both Chinese and Japanese glyphs, I think, for pretty much the whole thing. You can also use page up and page down. 
So you can see this is just huge. <laughs> and uh, okay, so look, there's the default. But then, so this font, I've specified multiple, uh, there's multiple font faces like the bold, uh, bold, um, bold italic. That doesn't look bold though. Semi bold, semi bold italic of the same, that same base font. But then I also added a bunch of fonts to draw Asian characters. So this font um, can display a ton of the Unicode uh, character set. So this is interesting because um, what this means is you can mix in ultra term, you can mix as many font faces together on the screen as you want simultaneously. And every single term cell can specify uh, what font to use. So that's, it's pretty powerful for composing uh, text-based user interfaces together. There's no limitation to the number, the, um, the number of glyphs you can have um, that you can draw from. I'm just kind of showing you random stuff now. This this is um, this is okay. So another cool thing about Ultra Term is you can load, you can actually draw ANSI art files to the term screen. So those are those are usually made with something uh, a character set called Code Page Four Three Seven, and uh, you can draw these. You can there are all these editor programs like Mobius. Uh, there's one called Mobius where you can draw on a canvas with these characters to create um, art pieces. And so here's an example of a simple one I made as a demonstration. So this one, um, you can, it's an applet. You just launch it from the, the ultra shell. And this is a demonstration of how you can animate ANSI art files in ultra term. So this is composed of a few different art, um, uh, imp so like these, this is actually loading the, the ANSI files from disk, drawing them to the screen and then layering them in the layer system and then animating them with some of the filters. Though the sparkling, uh, the sparkling kind of magic around the wand globe uh, that was done with a um, this twinkling stars applet. I think I twinkle. Yeah. So there's this screen object that you can set it to twinkle uh, characters uh, at a certain rate, certain characters, certain colors, etc. So I I used it as a sort of magic effect around this globe but the the wand itself and the aura that stuff was drawn in an external program saved to a file and then it's loaded at runtime and then they have filters applied to them to animate their colors and stuff oh yeah here's mushroom lord here's another example of combining ansi art with um ultra term with ultra term screen objects so um, this, uh, I didn't make this cool ANSI art. This was made by my friend Pixel Dude. He did a great job. Thanks, bro. So this, in this one, there's, uh, some kind of fungus creature. The Mushroom Lord, he's explaining to the funglets that, uh, there's a situation in the grotto. So in this example, there's a few different layers of ANSI art. And then in the background, uh, there's a twinkling stars. Uh, screen object. It's kind of I wanted it to look sort of like spores or something that were ra slowly raining down And uh, there's a tree. There's this guy. There's these, so these are all on different layers and so you can animate them separately and um, So the you can fade out their opacity, you can fade out their translucency You can add filters like at the end when the, the mushroom guide disappears uh, a color shift filter is applied with a fade opacity gadget. So he starts flashing colors and then slowly fades out, revealing the cells behind it. This is just another example of how you can you can um, you can add ANSI art assets to your ultra term applet designs. See, so yeah, these were designed. I'm pretty sure these were all all this stuff was drawn in Mobius ANSI art editor. And I mean, yeah, there's an ANSI demo applet as well that will 
this actually will load some ANSI files over the network from 16 colors, 16colo.rs, and draw them to the screen at a set delay rate to sort of, because uh, some of these old ANSI art, they, um, they were intended to be viewed with what's called ansimation, which is basically done by controlling the, um, the draw speed based on the, the baud rate. So you can, you can, um, can draw, you can animate, you can draw ANSI files to the screen in ultra term with any arbitrary baud rate. It's, or you can just draw it instantly. Oh, I really like, I really like this font. It's cool. It's called, um, I think it's from an old Sharp computer. It's another Viler font. Yeah, so I'll show you um, inside. So inside the demo, there it comes with a few different game levels. So the first level that starts with by default, it just supplies Ultra Term to the viewport, so it just looks like a regular text application. If you enter level select, there's a list of different levels you can open to test it out. To test out, um, some of them have 3D uh, have to Ultra Term set up in a 3D object, like this one, the 1702 level. So, let's take a look. So check it out, this is... So this is a 3D object, it's rendered in, in the game world. Uh, in this case, it's, uh, this one was inspired by, uh, Commodore 1702 monitor. This was made by my friend Green Pixel, he did a really nice job on it. Thanks, bro. So, you can, uh, if you press the E key, you can use the um, 3D terminal model. And once you're in using mode, and you can, you can break out of using mode by pressing escape, and you'll just kind of, you'll regain control of your pawn. You press E, you start using it, and then to shift between points of view, you just roll the mouse wheel. So I think this one only has three set up. Let's see. It actually has four. So the, the first one is just far away. So in, when you set up an actor in Unreal Editor, you can customize the viewpoint. Um, you can customize multiple viewpoints or a single viewpoint if you want to, uh, or none. You can just not even move the camera, but just lock the controls when you start using it. And you can, you know, you can change location. And then the whole time that you're in this mode, you can control the terminal with the keyboard. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think it was just running rain color shift. Yeah, it was, so. Now if I press escape, it's just running that. Yeah, cool. It's not super obvious in this demonstration, I guess, but there's, um, you, when you set the viewpoints for using the terminal, one of the options is to actually shift the, to fade the, the real world, um, the view of the real world. So right now, this, what you're seeing is being rendered in the 3D engine part of Unreal Engine, including what you're seeing, all this text and everything. But if you want to, Apply, if you want to take this same terminal that you're seeing on the 3D object and uh, render it directly in the viewport outside of the world, so in the same world that you'd usually just have your regular user interface. Um, in this one, I have, uh, I set the last zoom point to the mode where it'll actually fade, fade, uh, fade it onto the screen. So now, oh wait, hold on. I just want to turn off scan lines. It's a little too strong. So now, see how it sort of changes a little bit right there? So this is rendered in the world. This is rendered in the viewport. So it, it what it does is it fades a viewport widget on top of the uh, game world. So you can't see the game world anymore. So, I don't know. Sometimes you d it just looks better if you, um, like if you want... Because sometimes you can't get it to look quite the same when rendered in the game world as when it's rendered right in the viewport. So, you know, you have that option if you want to switch um, switch the focus to an overlay so you can get that perfect rendering if you really need it. So, by the way, you can, um, 
can run real console programs with UltraTerm. So if you have Windows system for Linux installed, you press, if you enter WSL, it'll, it'll actually launch Windows system for Linux. And then you can run real console programs like HTOP and stuff like that. But we won't, we won't play with that right now. You just exit back to UltraShell and switch back to the window level. So we're drawing, uh, we're not using a 3D terminal actor right now. I guess I could demo the filter system a little more. So there's this app called Filter Demo. And what this does is it shows off so some of the different filters you can apply to screen objects. So um, there's one called Invert, it just inverts the colors. There's one called Blink, it'll blink the, blink the cells at a specific rate. There's Blink Invert, it'll blink the colors inverted. There's blink colors, you can just you can specify the exact colors you want uh, them to blink as. There's draw delay, I really like this one. You can specify uh, a print speed for a screen object. So with, when you use it with text, it looks like it's printing it out on the screen. You can set the print speed based on characters per second or um, based on just a flat, uh, a flat amount of time. You can say, oh, I want this whole screened object printed in one second. I don't care how many characters it has. Or you can say, I want it to print at 20 or 30 characters per second. That's useful because then you can have the same print speed no matter how much text you're, um, you're printing in each element. Static gradient, so you can draw color gradients across the cells. So the static gradient is just un doesn't move. Uh, you can do that with the foreground or the background colors. Color sweep, you can sweep a gradient across the foreground, foreground and or background colors of the term cells. So you get this effect right here. This kind of um, you can. There are different kinds of gradients. You can use a rainbow, or you can actually you can specify colors to blend between. Uh, color streak. This one will draw. Um, it'll draw a color streak across the cell. You can do it across the foreground or the background colors. And um, that the ones below it are a demo of that. There's just some streaks being drawn across the background. And then here, this one. So you can you can also specify the alpha of the color. So in this case, it's streaking the colors from gold to transparent at least i think that's how it works it might just be streaking it to the black color to blend with the background i don't think so though i'm pretty sure i set it up so it works with the alpha channel as well so you can make little mini games and stuff with ultra term i made this little demo game called ultra twin so this one uses both the keyboard and the mouse it just has these simple controls hold down mouse to fire you just try to eliminate these mega squares and uh, you get a bomb every five seconds. You can hit space bar. But this, um, yeah, the plugin, co the plugin comes with this whole, this game. It's, it, I made this whole thing with just blueprints using UltraTerm's API. And so it's a pretty good example of how to make a sort of complex applet. So it's not that complex. But yeah, it's there for you to look at if you want. I'm just gonna kamikaze up. <laughs> yeah. Got wrecked. You enter to start again. But yeah, this is a um, this is a good one to look at if you want to sort of understand how to build an application with Ultra Term. Just check out the blueprint for this game. <laughs> oh, got wrecked again. Oh, by the way, to quit almost any application in Ultra Term, just press Control C. Oh yeah, the color bounce app. I really like this one. You can change the speed with the up and down arrow keys. And you can spawn new bouncers by clicking. This one is a demo. So in in Ultra Term, there's the layer system. But there's also each layer, you can also draw to uh, different Z indices. So you can actually draw by Z index within a single layer if, so that you can control what uh, draws on top of what. So in this case, uh, I'm drawing rectangles and then a as the rectangle moves, it, it just keeps spawning a new rectangle in a Z index above the previous Z index. 
And so they end up drawing over top of each other like this, and then the, the old rectangles slowly fade out, fade their opacity, and then the colors mix and blend, and it looks pretty. Yeah, so this is an example. This uh, the plugin comes with this. Uh, this uh, this was made. This one was made in C This one's a good one to look at if you want to look at how to use multi-threading to speed up processing a bunch of screen objects uh, each tick, because um, all of these are updated each frame uh, using a parallel for loop. So I designed UltraSherm to be usable. You can draw to the cell buffer. Uh, from any thread without crashing the program So you can easily do things like this you can animate every single square every frame. Oh, there's the hills demo This is just a demonstration of the ellipse drawing operation It actually each ellipse is just made up of a bunch of rectangles and um, By default there's two ways to draw rectangles in ultra term there's the slow way and the fast way and uh Here's a version of Hills with a nice starry background at, at sunset. Um, so there's two ways. If you go to bouncing, re bouncing rectangles demo, this thing actually explains the different rectangles. So what is it? Space is for a fast rectangle. So th that's this fast and slow it's control for a slow one. But the fast and slow rectangles, that doesn't refer to their bounce speed in this instance. It's actually how they're drawn to the how they're drawn to the screen so with with slow slow rectangles these are drawn um, so that each cell of the rectangle is drawn to the cell buffer on the CPU so this is fine in a lot of cases um, as long as the, the rectangle isn't too huge and the term screen isn't too huge the performance is negligible but then once you start drawing rectangles that take up the whole screen it can really slow things down because uh, each time it has to redraw the screen it has to iterate over every single one of those cells on the CPU it does that in another thread but what it'll do is it'll uh, tank the frame rate of ultra term screen so there's another type of rectangle you can draw called a fast rectangle and I mean they look generally the same they look the same but this one's drawn on the GPU instead of uh, on the CPU and uh, what that means is you can have a whole hell of a lot of these drawing at the same time without really impacting performance it's pretty nice I have uh, how many do we have right now if you open the debug control alt D to open the debug window it'll list how many so there are 715 rectangles that's quite a lot and the um, you know the term the right now so Unreal Engine's game rate is capped at 75 frames per second. It's just what it, what it does by default in Ultra Term Demo. But you can see that the term screen frames per second is uh, you know it, it's matching the game frame rate. So it means that it's not um, slowing down. It's not having any trouble keeping up with the max uh, frame rate right now. Even though there are so many of these rectangles. Uh, another thing you can do in this app is you press backspace It'll actually uh, start bouncing a stress test applet around and these things are expensive to draw because they change every single glyph in Every single term cell that uh, in the space that they take up every frame that changes the color foreground and background color and the glyph So it's pretty much a worst-case scenario if it's full screen anyways but yeah, you can just spawn these. So the, so as I mentioned, applets are just screen objects. So they can be attached as child screen objects to other applets. So here we go, <laughs> a whole bunch of, and those ones sometimes, I had set it so they randomly invert their color sometimes when spawned. So, um, you know, you can mix those with a bunch of rectangles and <laughs> see how the frame rate's doing now. It's still at 75 frames per second. That's pretty nice. So. Basically, it's not being affected at all past the point where it would matter. So that's pretty sweet. Press and to just blast all those things out. So yeah, that's fast and slow rectangles. Hope that made sense. Yeah, if you want to check out, uh, so there's this applet called App Showcase. 
And by the way, uh, Apple names are not case sensitive. You can just so if you to open App Showcase, what this does is it auto loads all the existing applets in a grid, and if you press the space bar, it'll it'll cycle the grid. You can see all the different ones. This is a pretty good stress test because some of these are pretty resource intensive. So when you draw them all on the screen at once, you know. But uh, so yeah, you, and so changing the font size, make it way smaller so that it's higher res. So we got the about, color bounce, hills, level select, rain, stress test, uh, ultra shell. I don't know what this one is. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's working properly. I don't know. Uh, this is radial fade demo. I don't think I showed that one yet. This is just an example of a screen object that just expands and um, the cells just fade out as over time. It's just a little animation example. The, a lot of these applets and screen objects are just demos to show people how to use ultra term. So these are, you can, you can study these to learn how to create your own animations and stuff like that. Yeah, filter demo, this. Oh yeah, fading color squares. So fading color squares. This is actually a demo of, so there's a special mode, there's a special screen object mode that you can set called wrap. So you, you can set screen objects to uh, clamp. I'm going to just turn this off in case this is giving someone a seizure. Uh, the, you can set it so that when a child screen object of uh, a, a screen object, including an applet, exceeds the bounds of this parent, you can control what happens. You can hide it. Or you can uh, you can clamp it so that it isn't visible when it moves outside of it, or you can um, you can wrap it. So what wrap does is so check this out. Window cascade. So this is just a little animated window that infinitely uh, goes back and forth on the screen. When it reaches the end, it just turns around and starts going the other way. But you notice that when it goes off screen, it just kind of disappears, right? Now there's another version of this called Window Cascade Wrap, where when it goes off screen, it's, it wraps around automatically to the other side and it starts drawing. And this happens infinitely. So really, this screen object is just moving in a straight line off into space forever. But because but it um, because the its parent is set to wrap its child screen objects that draw outside of its bounds, it it just keeps reinterpreting those off screen coordinates as being within the bounds of the screen, and then it just keeps drawing it. This is useful for things like this. So check this out. Um, in Ultra Twin, you see how the background and there's a little Easter egg in Ultra Twin. If you hold the space bar, it'll freeze the background stars on the title screen like the way that this effect was created with the stars rising up in the background is i placed a a large um no i placed a um a twinkling star screen object and then i started i added um what's called a gadget the gadgets are little components you can add to screen objects to do some kind of reusable behavior. So this is using a move gadget. I told it to move the stars upwards, like a hundred thousand or like a like ten million term cells over like seven days or something like that. And so it just infinitely moves upwards. But then I set the Ultra Twin um, main container, uh, its its root box, I guess, or maybe it was just the applet itself. I set it to uh, its um, overflow mode to wrap. So as the stars move upwards, they just start drawing again from the bottom forever. You can use the wrap um, feature for little effects like that if you want to just keep infinitely scrolling something or infinitely wrap something around. Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to show you for now. I just wanted to kind of um, Runner, I just wanted to kind of look around in Ultra Term demo here and explain some things. I'll show you next video I'll make is um, I'll show you how to actually use how to make stuff in Unreal Editor, how to make Ultra Term applications, and how to integrate it into 3D objects and use it in the game world and stuff like that. All right, talk to you next time.